Hi, in the past decade, software coding has been a very well-paid profession. But with changes in technology, it is time to refocus on engineering. The same way a Michelin star chef does not spend time peeling potatoes, computer scientists need to move up the value stack. In my career, I was an early Linux kernel developer in the 1990s, and more recently, I was a senior director leading the technology for consumer product operations at Google. In this video, I'll share my insights in value creation from this 35-year journey, so don't go anywhere. Hi, welcome to Career Cast, and today we are going to talk about how to develop a productive career in computer science and software engineering. You and I and a lot of people have spent a lot of time working at the very bottom of the value stack, right? writing code. Uh, I, I take a lot of pride in my past as a software developer, right? and we brag about the languages we know and how fast we can use VI. And the reason why we take so much pride is that there was so much demand for software development and because only humans could write code, there was a lot of demand for software engineers that became cut and paste engineers, right? People who are primarily doing programming. And today, if you're in Silicon Valley, you know, one can make half a million dollars a year just writing code. And again, there is nothing bad about writing code, but there is a lot of opportunity for us to spend more time, more energy, higher in the value stack and both deliver more value right for the work we do as well as to collect the financial rewards for that this episode is about going up in that value stack and if you think about what computer science is what software engineering is it's about the science it's about the engineering right so science is about understanding the world and engineering is about applying that knowledge to create technical solutions to solve business problems in the real world. Right? So what I'm going to do now is uh, give you five areas for you to focus on instead of learning your next programming language or, or spend more time improving your programming skills. There are five areas that you should prioritize to build uh, your career and to go up in the value stack. Number one is technology. It's the essence of engineering. It's the essence of computer science and you need to be a technology expert, right? So if you're in software development today, uh, you need to understand large language models. How do they work? You need to understand artificial intelligence. How does it work? And you need to understand the, the tools that are in experimentation today to automate the process of software development. You need to be the person among your friends, among your family, who understands this the best. You are professional, right? You need to be among your technical team, the person who understands the most about the technologies and the tools that are going to automate software development in the future. It is a threat to your current jobs, but if you ignore it, it it's gonna be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You need to embrace the technology and become the expert on how to apply new technology to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the work we do. Number two, uh, if you're gonna bridge right, the technical world with the real world out there, you need to be good at communications. When people like you and I, right, we are engineers and we hear about communication, we think, oh, I don't like, I am not extroverted, right? I like, that's why I, I went to engineering school. But this is not about being introverted or extroverted. It's about being effective communicators, right? So if you're gonna be a translator, right? Between the technical world and the external world, you need to be an effective communicator. You need to be able to communicate effectively with business people and then translate that, right? What are the problems? What are the solutions? How people expect the solutions to work? And translate that into the technical domain and be able to convert that into technical requirements and technical tasks that engineers can execute in the technical domain. Number three, uh, project management. Uh, any complex engineering system will involve a number of people and a number of people performing multiple roles Project management is a core, is at the core 
of engineering, right? What is project management? Project management is, in essence, the ability to take a big problem, analyze it, define a system architecture, right? define a, a, engineer, a technical system that can map the problems into solutions, break that system apart, and distributing tasks for people. So that, that process of analysis of a big problem into a big solution into individual tasks is core to software engineering. Once you divide that task, you need to be able to manage, right, the execution of those tasks, technical tasks. You need to be able to coordinate them and make sure they're all aligned both in time and in interfaces and then synthesize the technical solution and deliver it to the market. So project management is not what you usually think about. It is about that process of analyzing a system and then synthesizing a solution. And why you do that? Yes, you need to manage people, you need to manage budgets and resources, and you need to manage timelines. In the past, right, when I was writing code, we used today what today is known as waterfall, processes. Um, in the last 20 years, we have been using agile process or agile methodologies. Those are all old obsolete methodologies in order to work well and efficiently in the future. We are gonna, there's a need for more innovation in this space and you need to be part of this innovation. And that's one of the areas where there will be huge demand in the future, right? people who can manage engineering projects to optimize the understanding of the problem and the del delivery of the solution. Number four, domain expertise. Nobody can be an expert in everything, right? In my career, I have been an expert in operating systems, in customer service, customer support uh, applications, in networking, and this is over 35 years, right? So as you develop your career, you're gonna gain expertise in some areas, right? You're gonna understand the language, you're gonna understand the competitors, the market, the customer needs, the problems and the, the technology that can be applied in that space. And if you watch uh, my earlier videos, you'll find that I recommend early in your career, you switch jobs every two years or so, so that you collect a few samples of domain expertise. Extend your view beyond the, the technical requirements understand the problems of the customers, right? And understand how your solu the solution you're building works in the real world. So uh, be aware of the area your solution is being applied and develop that domain expertise. And number five, uh, higher in the value stack is leadership. Skills is something that takes a lifetime to develop. So you need to start investing today, right? So leadership in essence is the ability to influence a group of people, create a vision and move vision into execution, right? So that's what leadership is. And typically it involves things like people management, uh, personal branding, technical thought leadership, strategic thinking, you can take a leadership course, you can look at the additional content in Covers Cast about leadership, but the earlier you start developing leadership skills, the faster your career is gonna go through that inflection point to climb the value chain, right? Going from writing code, to understand system design, to understand analysis and synthesis, to be able to lead people towards a vision. So that's the future of your career. This is the future of any career, but particularly in engineering, particularly in software development, there is a huge opportunity today for you to position well to the market in the future because there is a lot of change happening. There'll be a lot of pain. There is a lot of disruption happening and people who are better positioned collect the rewards for doing it. So if this content is useful to you, please share and subscribe and see you in the next episode of Careers Cast.